All right, guys, welcome. This is episode 13 of the Bearsy Podcast. And today we got my good friend and fellow YouTuber Ryan Ng on the podcast. He was happy enough to join us today. Uh, what's going on, Ryan? How you doing? What's up? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Okay, so this is going to be your first podcast ever, right? Yeah, dude. I'm super excited. Dude, I was telling everyone about this. I was like, dude, I'm going to be on a podcast. Oh, are you really? <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, I listen to podcasts all the time, so... I I want to start one on, um, I want to start one of my own, but I don't know how this all this stuff works. It's awesome though. Yeah, man, you should do it. it. It's really easy to set up and get going. And once you like do the first couple episodes, it's actually a lot of fun and not that hard to do at all. Do you edit this? I'm just asking. Do you edit this? Um, sometimes uh, I'll edit like the audio and make sure I get rid of any like background noise or any of the peaking or kind of like. Um, add some bass or treble, you know, just to make it sound a little bit more professional. But aside you. from that, I keep the editing very minimal, unless I'm excessively sneezing or burping or something <laughs> stupid, then I might go in and like edit that out purposely. But aside from that, I kind of just, you know, keep it legit, let it go as it may. And if, you know, it screws up, it screws up, right? I love that. I love that. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to start off by talking about how we actually met and it's kind of interesting because um i think it was i saw one of your comments on youtube and yeah. i'm pretty sure that's how we first interact with one another and you left the most well thought out comment i think i've ever read like ever in the history of youtube and i was like what is this this guy like saying and it wasn't just like a well thought out two or three sentence comment it was like paragraph structured comment and i was like holy shit like what is this and of course naturally i'm going to click on your channel and see like what this dude's about right and you're exactly into the same type of stuff that i am in, into like filmmaking that's how we kind of kind of started yeah man. but um from your end how did you do you remember how you found my channel dude okay so i've been i've been trying to make youtube videos since Dude, I've been trying to make YouTube videos since I was 12 and I'm 19 now. So it's been quite a long time. And um, when I was like starting out, like, you, you know, like with every Gen Zer nowadays, they, they're all like, oh, I want to be a YouTuber. Like, that's the job that I want. All for like the worst possible reasons. You know what I mean? Like getting the followers and getting the fame that you see famous YouTubers have, like, I don't know, like Logan Paul and all those people mm -hmm. so um i was like i don't know like I, I was that type of person that would comment on people's channels just to kind of get subscribers and views and it was like the worst thing in the world and then um once i got into college uh, i kind of stopped making youtube videos and i went i, I went down this whole kind of journey and I'm sure you've gone down this journey of like, like discovering people like Gary Vee on the internet and like Nathaniel Drew and stuff like that. And like, that's oh, when yeah. you really start to, you know, change your perspective on, 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 on how you carry yourself in life and on YouTube and whatever. So I was like, all right, maybe I'll give uh, YouTube another shot. And that's what I did this time. And this time I'm like, with all the things that I've learned from these 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 people I admire so much on on the internet, I'm like I'm going to instead of like trying to tackle this in in like a, a, a I I want to be famous type of way or I want to get rich off of doing this video thing that I love to do, it's like pro provide the most amount of value that I possibly can with everything that I can possibly do on on YouTube on on whatever platform i want to grow on so um that's how i kind of started out and, and that's how i started to comment on these channels and then i came across yours because there's like this whole community of small youtubers that kind of mm -hmm. support each other and I, I think it starts out with this kind of you know commenting on other people's channels just for um the subscribers and then i i just got so sick of it and i was like 
I'm just going to comment on people's channels that I, I legitimately enjoy. And like, so that's kind of when I came across your channel. And then, uh, and then I left that comment because I, I forget what video it was, but I think, I think it, it, uh, it hit something, uh, you know, it, it struck a chord with me. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. It struck a chord with me. And then I had to comment that, you know, so that's how I find mm -hmm. your channel. So when you started off commenting on other channels, were you in that group of people that would be like, Hey, I'm a small YouTuber. Let's kind of grow together. Sub for sub, all that kind of stuff. Were you like, that, that like was, that? that was me when I was like, like 15, like 17, like around that age. Um, but like, dude, there's this like whole other community of people that, that, that kind of do that, but don't, they're, they're like a subtle version of that. Do you know what I mean? They're like, oh, I love your stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then like, they'll subscribe to you and never watch your videos again. Like they subscribe to you just so they could, you could subscribe back. And they're like, I want to provide oh, okay, the most so. value to you. That was like me. And then I was like, this is so fake. I'm just going to subscribe to people that I actually enjoy, you know? So like, I used to like, I don't know. There, sorry, Siri just popped out of nowhere. So it's all good. No worries, man. I actually had a similar story as you too when I was first starting off YouTube, and I started off way back in the day. Like my account was created in two thousand and seven, so like my channel has been like active for thirteen years, and there's Dude, been like crazy. years and years of. I must have gone through. 10 different niches among the years and I've done literally every single YouTube mistake you possibly could I posted irregularly I posted all kinds of crazy content from playing sports to vlogging to doing some type of computer software tutorials and then I was doing sub for sub and then whenever I would get trolled I'd get upset and delete videos and I went through this whole hurricane of every single YouTube failure you can think of I went through all of that and this was in the early stages where it wasn't really about getting monetized or getting in the partner program. It was more about like just you just wanted subscribers, right? And it took me years to figure out that even now, like the metric of subscribers, it doesn't it, it's not everything. And YouTube is more concerned about things like, you know, like click through rate and your watch time and your engagement and all these other metrics. But for some reason, people are always have this idea that by getting more subscribers, it's gonna somehow bring you happiness. And eventually I got rid of this whole notion of, oh, I need to, I need to be a, I need to find fellow small YouTubers and do sub for sub to build my community. And I just got rid of all of that completely. And I just decided that I'm just gonna focus on content that I love to make and just do what I love. And then just if people that like it, they'll find it and then they'll just find their way to me. And then I'll just go from there. And I got rid of that whole toxic mindset of just going for the numbers, if you know what I mean. Dude, it took me the longest freaking time to actually understand that. I don't, and I don't, I think it's just getting sick of, it's just getting sick of like the numbers and stuff like that, or just viewing the numbers in such an emotional type of way. I think viewing the numbers and, and the analytics is like a necessity if you want to grow on YouTube, but you cannot put emotion into um you can't put emotion into looking at the numbers it's kind of like playing a video game kind of like if you fail you just like you know respawn and just try try it again you know post another video yeah. that's all that's all it's about right and like it sounds so obvious but so many people don't understand it and i, I i'm so glad to have met people like you because i feel like you know people like you understand it and like it's like if you provide value in some way and if you provide it like and if you're really good at solving a problem for a community of people you're bound to grow you know and you're and you're growing in you're growing in an authentic and a in like the most beautiful way possible because 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 you're changing people's lives uh, along the way you know and that's that's i think that's truly what youtube and, and and creating content or just anything in the world is about right is providing value you know oh 100 and like if you want to like 
Or you're gonna, no, go ahead. It, I, I was just going to say, like, like if you want to be, like, rich and famous and all that stuff, you, you cannot, you can't really think about that stuff, right? If you want to be YouTube famous, you can't think about being YouTube famous. You know, th- th- there's somewhat, like, that's such a blanket statement, right? There, there's so many layers under that. It's like, why, why do you want to do it? Do you want to provide value or do you just want it for the money? Because if, if you want it for the money... I don't know. It's just it's just never going to work. I know everyone says it all the time, but I feel like it can't, it just doesn't get across people's minds. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like people need to come to that realization themselves. Like you can tell someone or a beginning beginner YouTuber all that information that you just said, which is 100% correct. But if they're not willing to accept that fact, then it's not going to change their mindset, right? I feel like some people they always think of youtube as this kind of get rich quick scheme in order to get famous or something they see people post these videos that somehow instantaneously go viral and they go from 10 subs to 10,000 to 100,000 and then all of a sudden they're making all this money off of adsense and revenue and sponsors and they think that oh i can do that i have a phone i can just take a video i want to be famous too but then when they're posting content from a disingenuous position. That's the exact type of response you're generally going to get. And I find that a lot of the YouTube audience nowadays, they're they're pretty good at like kind of sniffing out bullshit. Like if you're a legitimate person and you're honest and you're transparent and you're giving and you're providing value, like you said, then people will always resonate with that. And they'll kind of find their way towards you. And I think, I think that even if you give someone all that information and tips, they have to be willing to absorb it and apply it to themselves or else, you know, it's, it's just going to go through one year and out the other. Right. Exactly, dude. Exactly. I, I mean, I, I, I couldn't have said it better. Like that, I mean, I, I know we're just talking about YouTube, but this literally applies to everything. I think our society is so caught up in like getting money and, and all that stuff like like you know parents are pushing their kids to 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 go to the greatest schools in the world so that they could live a, a, a wealthy and like comfortable life but that's just so untrue that's just so untrue i think uh like i don't know i don't know it's just it's just it, it's just yeah, so i know cra- i know it's what just you're so saying cra- it's just so crazy to think it's like common sense you know it's like it's so it's so obvious like this isn't this isn't how things are supposed to be and yet people people just try over and over again you know it's hard because especially from like our parents perspective like obviously they love us and they mean well for us and they want to they want us to be successful they want us to be safe and they want us to be secure and i actually had this conversation with uh, my best friend earlier today who is a YouTuber and he has like a hundred thousand subscribers or whatever, right? Oh, damn. And yeah, so he has um, three kids and I have a newborn newborn this year that is nine months. So I'm a new parent, right? Mm -hmm. And I have this like juxtaposed mindset where I have these beliefs that I feel like you should always chase your passion and do what you love and not do things solely for the purpose of money or job security. Like I struggled with that whole university post-secondary thing. But as a parent, as soon as I became a parent, the only thing I can think of is I want my daughter to be safe, to be secure, to get a stable job, to go to school. Like that whole parent mindset kind of just evolved in me. And I was like, whoa, okay, what's going on here? Because now that I'm a parent, that parent mindset contradicts my beliefs as a person. So I'm like, okay, I'm in this kind of weird paradoxical situation where I believe one thing, but now my instincts as a human being and a father are kind of like taking that over. Do you have to remind yourself? Yeah, because I have to, I have to be very um, careful with my mindset because it's going to affect how I raise my daughter. Right. And I had this conversation with my friend and he feels like as parents, especially in this new generation of the internet, because like our parents, well, at least my parents, they they grew up in like the 70s and the 80s. So there was no internet. It didn't exist, right? Mm -hmm. But now there's things like 
Twitch and YouTube and TikTok and Instagram. And these are actual professional careers that you can make a good living from. So it's not that these are bullshit jobs. It's just that the era that we live in now, it's very different. And it's a lot kind of easier to pursue your passion. And going through academia and going through university and college and getting a corporate nine to five, that's not the only answer anymore. Dude, like, I don't think it was ever the the only answer like just think about it we're, we're like everyone's different everyone's different and and i was talking to my friend about this the other day like like this is everyone's first time or at least like whatever we know of it's it's our first time being alive right so like yeah it, i know it sounds like it's super existential and everything but like like it's literally like no one knows what they're doing nobody like nobody knows what they're doing right no one knows anything so like the fact that 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 people think that that there's one answer to 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 everything in life is i don't know it just doesn't make any sense you know what i mean like and what what is a risk what what is a risk because we're only going to live this life once right so job security is is a risk as well job security is a risk as well so so what are you gonna do you know what i mean like yeah exactly i don't know it's it, it's super existential but um yeah you know you know what really resonated with with me um through your content um your most recent video the nyu um uh, rejection video yeah so you're not going to university or college at all, right? That that's the current situation. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, like if it sounds so weird to say it, because like I don't know, I've I've grown up my whole life tr- like knowing that I was going to finish college. Like three years ago, I was like, dude, I'm just gonna go to business school and just ride it out and see what happens. And and now I'm like pursuing filmmaking and like not in school so that that's kind of where i'm at right now so yeah Yeah. so where did you discover your passion of filmmaking or or where did that start it started it started when i was 12 um when i um discovered youtube it was like that ryan higa kind of smosh kind of uh era of youtube yep a freddie w type of era um And like, I don't know, it was just, again, it was this super blanketed statement, like this, this, this super like a surface level type of belief that, you know, YouTube was the easy way out of life, right? YouTube, you know, I didn't have to study. I didn't have to do this. I didn't have to do that. If I focused on YouTube, I could, you know, be, you know, I can make a great living making stupid videos and i did every single video you could possibly you know like i was doing comedy sketches stupid stupid comedy sketches i was doing like pranks um i was doing (laughs) i I, I was doing like roblox videos and then minecraft videos and um i was like during that vine era when vine was a thing i was making vines and i just checked a couple days ago um, cause like I keep all of these videos and like, um, in iMovie, they'll like number the, the movies that you've kind of made. And I, by the time I was like 17, I've made like 500 videos, just the dumbest, Whoa. the dumbest videos you could ever think of. And it was for the worst reason possible. Again, it was just for like trying to become famous you know i was doing sub for sub i was subscribing to people like crazy i was subscribing to people and i'm subscribing to them like crazy but like along the way i i didn't know this but along the way i was learning how to edit right it was like at that minecraft phase where i think i was editing really well and then um also i just didn't give a shit about my life back then um, I, you know, I was just, I had the worst grades and then, or, or for an Asian, I had the worst grades. Um, 
while my sister was oh, like don't worry man i can relate <laughs> <laughs> like my sister my sister was thriving in school and i was just like i want to make youtube videos i want to do this i want to do that and my parents had the worst time I, i'm sure my parents had like the the worst time raising me because i just never paid attention i was only thinking about youtube videos about being famous and then i don't know what happened really but something clicked when i was 17 and um i guess man i don't, I don't even know what it was but i guess it was uh, like listening to these motivational videos they were like les brown um eric thomas like those og speakers that were on youtube and like something something hit me really hard and i was like and and back then i was just like i'm gonna go to business school you know with my 3.0 gpa with my c to b average you know and and that's it you know that that's my life i'm just gonna get a corporate job like my dad go to baruch college some something something easy you know and then um i don't know something just hit me when i was 17 and I transitioned out of YouTube into filmmaking because I mean that was the easiest thing because I was already editing and and, and and shooting video and stuff like that so it was the smoothest transition into my passion and then I went to film school um, and I hated it because I felt like the people there weren't really as obsessed with filmmaking as I was at that time everyone was just kind of partying and, and and doing whatever so i was like dude i can't stand this anymore i'm gonna transfer and so i applied to nyu and um and like i thought that was gonna like solve all my problems but then it kind of just hit me again like it was like nyu is gonna be the same exact thing as the college that i'm in right now you know like co- like college students are going to be college students they're going to party they're not you know, maybe some more people are going to be focused on film, but I don't think as much. So, like, I was like, I'm just going to drop out and kind of pursue this dream of becoming a filmmaker, a YouTuber. And, and like, you know, I want to own a production company one day. So, like, I know it sounds crazy, but that's my that's my dream right now. So, yeah. No, it's good to have dreams, man. A lot of people don't even know where they're going or they're always just like, instead of living life, and striving for something they're just kind of like existing and i can't understand i'm a little i know but like a lot of people a lot of people struggle with that and that's actually kind of like what i struggle with direction for like the longest time and i always tell people that are younger than me especially content creators i'm always envious of those especially that are young that they have a goal in your mind like you want to start a production company like that's like amazing when i was your age All I wanted to do was play StarCraft and play (laughs) basketball. Like I didn't want to do anything. I literally did nothing. That's all I cared about was playing StarCraft, trying to win games in ranked or whatever, and then going out and play basketball in the afternoon. That's all I cared about. I didn't think about money, a career, a job, like nothing, like literally nothing. And I wasted so many of those early years, specifically my entire 20s, like literally doing nothing. And now that I'm so much older, I always try to inspire the the younger generation. If you have a goal in your mind already, then you're already one step ahead of the game because now you can work towards that end goal and you have like the steps in place to get there. Like say if you wanted to uh, create your production company, right? Then there's all these things that you know that you need to do. For example, like for me, like I want to, I don't know, say do this podcast. So I know I got to get better with audio i got to get a proper mic and you got to learn all these things but there's these people that they don't have direction they don't even have a next step on where to go and especially at your age because you said you're 19 right i think that's yeah. huge that you have like a dream in mind right appreciate that i think i think it's totally okay like to have no direction i think like i mean what like the guy from kfc he created kfc when he was in his 60s like you can change the world even at an old age but i think um the thing that the thing that bothers me i guess is like people are so okay i'm gonna try to 
explain this in, in, in the most uh, in the easiest, I don't know, in the simplest way possible. Like, people love structure, right? Yeah. And I think society and, and like, the corporate jo- nine to five and school gives people structure that, and they don't really have to think about anything, right? They don't have to think about, oh, what's my ambition? What's this? What's that? It's the easiest thing to fall back to is... The educational system is the corporate job is the nine to five right it's this it's the easiest thing because there's no structure you like there is a structure made for you society made it for you society's telling what you what to do you don't have to use your head to actually go like oh what's my dream and how do i get there right um and people the thing that bothers me the most is that people get stuck in that kind of People always fall back to the structure. They they have these. It's like the, you know, it's like that that study where it was like, you know, most people give up on their New Year's resolutions after two weeks, because they they just, in my opinion, I think they get super lazy with making a structure, uh, or making like a set of goals step by step that they can actually reach. Uh, that they always just kind of fall back to their old ways and fall back to what society tells them what you know what to do and that just that's the thing that bothers bothers me because you literally you only live once you know and and i think that's what hit me so hard after i dropped out is that like dude i'm struggling like crazy right now like you know my dad's like not happy with me at all um you know, he, he <laughs> dude, he thinks like he thinks I'm a failure. Like um, you know, like my mom's not happy and like dude, when I dropped out, it was the it was like the toughest couple months of my life. And it's still very tough cuz I'm still living with my parents and all I want to do is, is make enough money to move out um to start this production company, but like um I feel so much more, it sounds so cliche, but I feel so much more alive, right? Because I'm freed from the educational system that I couldn't bear. And and I can pursue these goals that that I've wanted to do so badly. And it's lonely, but I, I kind of feel like this is like the best thing that's ever happened to me. You know what I mean? So... Because it forces me to create my own structure. Now that I'm not in school, I don't have a job. Like I have to. Like there's no other choice but to create my own structure, and and, and work towards what I love to do. You know, that's my survival. You know what I mean? So. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that 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 that's that's my little um, spiel on like why what what bothers me about society Mm -hmm. you know it's actually what my life path is very similar to yours and trust me i can totally relate especially with um asian parents the importance of post-secondary education the importance of getting a degree yeah like for me on my mom's side her whole family comes from computer engineers like all of them like all of her brothers are computer engineers Mm -hmm. and this is the asian side of my family and i was next in line like they had jobs ready for me they picked out universities that were good for me and so like i enrolled into these universities specifically for computers and computer science and all of that and when i quit and dropped out it was like it felt like i was banished from the family like the amount of sheer disappointment was absolutely brutal like my mom was crying my dad was furious and it and it's it's weird because um so my background is is mixed right so uh, my dad is european and my mom is japanese right Mm -hmm. so i have that really strict asian parent influence and the importance of school right Mm -hmm. and then on the european side I have like my dad who 
is so into like working hard. He worked like three jobs. He gave me the opportunity to go to university and then I just fuck it up, right? So the amount of disappointment I faced was, it was incredible. And that's probably the exact same thing that you're going through right now. Your parents were probably so upset and you probably feel like you failed them or disappointed them in some way, right? Yeah. And in time, it you know, it will get better in time, of course, like all things do. But like at the end of the day, like you said, we only live once and you need to do like what is true to you and you can't live your life trying to just please your parents, right? Exactly. And, I, I, I said... And we both learning that the hard way, right? Why does Siri keep... Why does... Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. The, <laughs> it's okay. What's um, going on? Siri? No, I totally agree. On. Um, like... It's the path of least regret, right? And this is the funniest thing, I think. When I was talking to my mom, and I was like kind of arguing with them. And I I went through this like horrible period where it was just like notes speaking to each other. Like my mom said, the one thing that I don't want to happen is for you to in when you're 30 and when you're 40 years old to regret that you don't have a college degree. And I'm like, but you can't control what. I regret and what I don't regret. I think that's a very common misconception, right? People think that if you don't follow society, you're going to regret it. And I think that's just about the complete opposite of what regret means, right? Regret means uh, like not being able to embrace yourself and, and, and stuff like that. So I think like for me, if I didn't pursue this path of, of trying to build a production company of, of trying to influence people through storytelling and and through what i love the most i would regret that i wouldn't even think twice about not having a college degree i don't give a shit about that piece of paper but um mm -hmm. but you know it's like my mom kind of determined it's like our parents kind of determine what we're gonna regret and what we're not gonna regret and I think that's just totally the wrong way of viewing things. And I'm, I'm only 19, but, um, you know, like I always think about it. Like when I become a parent, like I, I, I need to remind myself constantly that, that, um, my kids need to embrace who they are and I'm not the one who controls what they regret and what they don't regret. Right. So that that's, yeah. You know what I mean? Hold on, you're you're muted. I can't I can't really hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Is it better? Technical difficulties. It happens all the time. Um All right, we're good you're again. Good? We're good again. But yeah, regret, regret. Okay. That's what I was talking about. Um The path of least regret is not someone that is not something that your parents or or someone decides for you, right? Your, the path of least regret is, is it is about like embracing who you are and making sure that when you're no longer here, you know, you've left some sort of imprint on this world, some sort of impact. You, you, you've you impacted this world in some sort of positive way in your own way, you know, mm -hmm. and, and not in in the, the societal, you know, way that that people always kind of gravitate towards. Yeah, for sure. You, you know, what's interesting um, I want to backtrack to something that your mom said. She says, you said that if when you're 35 or 40, she doesn't want you to regret that you didn't get your degree. What's funny about that is yeah. I'm 36, so I'm four years away from 40. And I don't regret at all not getting my degree. Better yet, even if, if you could tell me that I could, you could magically give me my degree now in computer engineering, I would say no thank you. Because even though I didn't finish, you know, finish school, but I was able to go through the struggles in life and which led me up to the position I'm in right now. And I absolutely love where I'm currently at. And even if you could say, oh, here's a computer engineering degree and we'll give you a $75,000 a year job as a whatever, a tech person, I'd be like, no, thanks. Because that is not what I want. I don't regret that in the slightest at all. And I, I don't even, I don't even think about it. Like it doesn't even come to my mind at all that I don't have a degree. I could care less about that. 
dude that's that's super reassuring um like let me can i just ask you this like like dude whatever you were telling me like in your 20s you were playing star trek and like playing basketball all the time like i do not like i do not see that person it, like in fr- <laughs> like talking to me right now yeah. like or, or like the the person that that the, like i watched you know youtube mm-hmm. videos and, and and like comment you know and, and you like the way that you have such like insightful uh, uh um like comments on life like when when you look back at like we are 20 like your 20s and like even like myself looking back at before i discovered this whole filmmaking thing like i feel like i see like a completely different person yeah it's it's a hundred percent not like i'm not even i'm not even close to the type of person i was before like when i was in my 20s i was maybe like 140 pounds like i was scrawny i was skinny i was weak i was introverted i was i was shy and afraid of public speaking and i had all these weird insecurities and i had no ambitions in life like literally nothing like nothing and i didn't get like a proper job or entered like the workforce where i currently work at fedex right now and i didn't start there until i was 27 like that's a huge gap Mm -hmm. right and and it was only like at 27 okay okay, i gotta start you know doing something right gotta like use my money towards something or get a job right but it wasn't until um you were talking about listening to those like og motivational speakers like um tony robbins and les brown and all those guys and i really got into like fitness like bettering my health not um Mm -hmm. not to like be more healthy but because i was like sick and tired of being weak and and scrawny and just like getting pushed around on the basketball court all the time and then i got into um, lifting weights and going to the gym and that sparked this unbelievable like butterfly effect which rippled through my entire life not only did i start building a better body and start getting stronger it kind of built up my self-confidence and I started feeling better about myself. And then I started to realize like, okay, maybe I'll start eating better because I'm going to the gym, right? I don't want to waste like all this effort I'm putting in by eating shitty food. So I started eating better. And then mm-hmm. once I started eating better, it gave me all this extra energy. And now I'm like, oh, holy shit, I can I can work like 16 hours a day, no problem. I have all this, like, all this built up energy now, right? And I f- discovered this newfound passion for self-development and self-improvement. And I have a very obsessive compulsive personality like when i play video games i can't just play i have to play to like to like be the best and i have to play like 15 hours a day and it's just like this this urge and i can't just play for fun right and then i just went all in on the self-development stuff and it was and it was just like i felt that i wasted so much time in my life that I need to utilize every single hour of every day now to make up for all that lost time. Because now I'm like in my 30s when I made this, um, where I had this epiphany, right? So now I'm like listening to audiobooks, listening to podcasts, just consuming information and learning and then buying a camera and learning about videography. And I have, and I've just been so obsessed with just bettering my life that even if you could say, you know, here's a $75,000 computer engineering job, you know, like, no, thank you. I'm good. Dude, that is the most, like, that. that is why people live, right? To to improve and to progress and to grow. And, like, to look back at, at who you were in your 20s and, and, like, your 30s and, like, just see how, how, how much you've changed. Like, and I just can't imagine, like, and I'm sure it's the same with you, you know, just simply can't imagine like that that person was once you you know (laughs) i don't know that's just crazy that's just like that's just mind-blowing it's like completely i I would never say the things that i said when i was you know 17 I, i would never do the things that i did i don't know it's just like progress and and just writing down goals it really does something to you even though you you may might not see the the material results you know like a big house or anything like 
it's it's obvious like your character is changing and 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 you're working towards something that's bigger than yourself you know and that's the most beautiful thing about about um you know this life or about life in general is that is that we're supposed to be constantly improving and we're supposed to be uh um uh helping the human race kind of uh, move forward in a way right because no one I, i think i think that we're here you know you know that like existential crisis like that that existential thought like oh why why are we here on this earth like what what's my what's the point of being alive and all that stuff like i truly think that that we're all here to to find answers right and we're very early on in the stage of human beings and we're never going to see you know what it's like to be in space and, and and all that stuff but if we can help you know people like us and future generations to to get to those places to find the answers that humans have been questioning for such a long time my life has been worth it you know mm-hmm. and and i don't know a big inspiration of mine is like elon musk because he's literally like like doing all this stuff you know to move the human race forward if we're not moving the human race forwards in some way whether it's um working towards you know equal rights or whether it's you know advancing technology so that we can go to space and and, and possibly find other life out there like what's the point of living you know to get rich and all that stuff no one's gonna put your net worth on your tombstone you know you're like you're gonna be remembered by uh the work that you did when you were alive and like the stories that you can pass down to generations and inspire so i don't know i think like that that's how i think um and like like i think that that's how i make sense of this whole thing of of this world you know what i mean so yeah yeah. for sure man i i totally agree with with all of that i remember there was one quote about the meaning of life that i heard um a couple years ago and i'll and it always like stuck in my head and it was like the meaning of life is in death you get to look yourself you get to look at the mirror and the meaning of life is seeing your potential self in the mirror and you just see your reflection and it's just achieving yeah. what your potential is and doing things that you love and making a positive impact on the world and it's just like the worst part is if when you die you look in that mirror of potential and you see what you you know you see what you could have been or what you missed out on right and if you were afraid of pursuing something and it's it's hard because a lot of people you know struggle with with meaning and and they struggle with money and all that type of stuff because i know a lot of like rich people will preach this whole you know meaning of life and follow your passion and make an impact and you know make the world a better place and people always have this like terrible mentality of like well yeah that's easy for you to say because you're a millionaire well yeah, that's easy for me elon musk to follow his passion because he's a billionaire but it's like that's that's the wrong way to think about the about those things and i hate that right exactly. instead of you know looking at what those successful people do they're, you're kind of like making an, an excuse at why you need money or why um they've achieved something that you haven't and it's a hard thing to change in our society, especially like how, you know, we need money for so many, you know, so many different things in the world. And it's so hard to change someone's mm-hmm. opinion, especially like our parents or people we love, you know, when it comes to getting a normal job and finding that, you know, secure wage. Right. It's just like you, you simply for the people that don't want to understand you, that they, they simply will never understand you like you know you could say that you know if like you hear jeff bezos say oh you can do anything that you want to do in this world and you could change the world in whatever way you want to change it 
that then people are going to say exactly what you said like oh that's easy for jeff bezos to say he's the richest man in the world yeah exactly but like for people like you know myself who is not successful yet and i'm telling people oh yeah you can change the world in such a positive way blah 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 and they're like you're not doing shit right now like you're not making money and you're not doing anything so why should i listen to you you know so people are always going to make mis- uh people are always going to make excuses um and i i think that's a little bit disappointing right because because um you want you you want the best you know you, you're telling them like this i don't know this secret I, I don't i don't even know what it is but like it's this feeling that you have it's like this energy that allows you to work for you know you know 10 10 16 hours a day but like i just feel like they have to experience something first to uh to fully understand what what we mean it's not enough just to say it because you can say it a million times and it'll just go through the other ear but you know so i guess i guess what i want to do and what i hope to do with with storytelling and with filmmaking and with whatever i'm going to do in my life is try to find a way that can you know influence people to take action i, I don't know how but that that's the goal right to get people to take action oh that'd be amazing man that's like something that i try try to do you know what you know what is so crazy like i work um a normal a normal job right and i don't tell anybody right. about my passions about this whole youtube stuff but i don't know what happened but somehow recently a couple of people at work i guess they somehow found my channel i have no idea how because most of the people i work with are older mm-hmm. and um i i work with mostly guys like i'm a courier for fedex like a delivery driver or whatever Mm -hmm. and i get Mm -hmm. made fun of and get ridiculed so much it's crazy like i'll come into work and be like oh look at me i'm derek i want to be a youtuber ha 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 right and i just like all right guys that's cool like fine but then the thing that's very interesting is these people that i work with they complain all the time about not having enough money. They complain about the economy, the government, income tax is too high. Mm -hmm. And then I say to them, okay, so what are you going to do about it? And they do absolutely nothing. Every weekend they spend going to the club or watching Netflix marathons or playing PlayStation or Xbox. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like you're shitting on me for like putting in all this extra work after my day job to pursue my passion, to put out positive work into the world. And even though they've seen my work and they see the message that I'm trying to convey to other people, in their mind, they still reject it. And then for them, it's easier to deflect their shortcomings as a human being and then just make fun of me. And I'm I'm old enough to have really thick skin, so it doesn't really bother me at all. I could care less. But I find it very mm-hmm. interesting, the mindset that regular people... Well, I, sh- I shouldn't say regular people because it sounds negative, but... You know, like the, st- like the normal I know person that works a day job, right? I find their mindset so narrow, right? And just because they see that I'm trying to better the world or do something, their first response is to just like rip me apart and make fun of me. And it's, it's, um, it's actually kind of interesting because I'm making a video on this exact subject like this week. So it's, it kind of, it kind of um, goes hand in hand with our conversation. Dude, I'm just listening to that. Dude, I cannot wait until until your channel or your podcast kind of just, you know, blows up. Cause I don't know, it just, it just, you know, it like listening to the stuff that we're saying. It's like, like I don't know. It's just whenever whenever I hear myself say it, Siri just keeps on popping up. I don't know why. It's all good. No worries, man. Um. Um. What was I saying? Yeah, like, it sounds so obvious, the stuff that we're saying. Like, super, super obvious. Like, common sense obvious, right? But it just shocks me that at least, you know, the majority of the people that I know don't um, don't follow that. Don't, don't embrace, you know, embrace what life 
can can hold and and they always laugh at those people that are actually working towards something you know um i just think it's crazy and 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 i think it's crazy how again like you said how narrow their their mind is i i just can't i can't imagine someone living like that Mm -hmm. and that's the majority of people too It's, it's not just like one or two people it's like the overwhelming majority it's almost as if they feel threatened by my position but that i am in somehow or another making their accomplishments smaller like they see me as like oh derek thinks he's better than fedex he thinks he's better than a, just being a delivery driver right oh, oh look at me right and instead of like thinking okay hmm, maybe i could you know maybe try to learn something from him and better my own life instead of always complaining about my money problems. But instead they just instantly deflect and turn to negativity because that's so much easier of a choice to make. Right. And then they conceptualize these ideas in their mind. Oh, haha, you're doing something stupid. That's never going to work. You know, you're doing what you're talking about films and self-improvement and doing all this stupidness. No one's going to care about that. And I'm just like, okay, you know, like that, that's fine. But it's, it's so hard when you see the average person's mindset when it comes to these things that they're not even open to the ideas at all. I just think that's in my, like in my mind, I, I I just feel like that's unimaginable. Like, uh, there's this like Chinese, uh, there's this Chinese story at that, that my mom always tells me, uh, of, um, of a frog that lives in the well and the only thing he sees is that small patch of sky and he thinks that's the whole world is this small patch of sky and he never took the time to get like jump out of the well to actually see what you know the world actually looks at so whenever these birds kind of fly by the well um, they always tell the frog about the world that's out there and the frog just laughs at the bird and stays in his well and I think that that's a great um, you know example of, of you know your co-workers and like just most people in 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 this world you know oh yeah 100 percent and 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 it's crazy because it's crazy to see the possibilities that that we can achieve as people and, and people just put a ceiling on themselves and and think that that this is the best they can do mm-hmm. you know it's scary it's scary i know because people can i feel like people underestimate the potential of the human body and the human mind i feel like you can always do more than just 40 hours like for example i've been working like a 40 hour a week full-time job right for years and i put in 20 to 30 hours per week into my youtube videos on top of that where it's scripting filming shooting b-roll editing adding effects like all my time goes into it so that's 40 hours at work plus the additional about 30 hours on top of that and recently i finally made the decision that I wanted to pull back from my full-time job and kind of pursue my passion a little more, but also to help my wife out with our daughter. So I stepped down recently um, to part-time, and now I only work about 30 hours a week. So it's freed up this extra time that I can invest in myself and put into my YouTube channel, right? And then again, like all my coworkers like lit me up last week when they found out they're like why'd you step down to part-time that's so stupid that's such a dumb choice now you you're making less money you don't get the full vacation days and all this stuff and i'm like yeah dude but that's that's not what i care about the purpose of my life is not vacation days or holidays like i don't give a shit about that you know what i mean like that's not my purpose but like yeah it was like they basically told me i was so stupid for giving up a full-time job to drop down to part-time right and it's like but when i get to that point i feel like those are the type of people you no matter how hard you try no matter how positive of a message you send out to them if they're just 
so close-minded that they never want to change at all, then, you know, they're kind of just stuck in their ways, right? And it's almost like I'm kind of wasting my time talking to them, right? So now I kind of feel like I have, like, no friends at work anymore. Like, before, I was always just, you know, like, one of the guys, right? And I'm, like, one of the youngest guys there because most mm-hmm. of the people I work with, they're, like, in their 40s or 50s. They're, like, an older bunch, right? Because we're, like, the blue-collar right. blue collar workers, right? So I went from being like one of the guys to like now I'm an I'm an outcast, some TikTok wannabe YouTube guy that talks about taking cold showers and writing gratitude journals, right? And I I've become like this laughing ongoing joke, right, at work. And it it's kind Dude. of like I'm not upset about it or right? it doesn't hurt my feelings at all, but I just kind of stop and I step back and then it kind of just I just kind of smile and then just try to take it in stride. I think it's the most exciting thing in the world, you know? I don't, like, I love being, like, different and, like, because people try so hard to fit into other people and society and they don't realize the the individual potential and the individual talents that they have. They just never discover it in their lives, right? I think that everyone is good at something and... I think just just listening to your story, I just I can relate to it so much. Like when I was in college, I went to film school, you know, and, and film is mostly seen as this, um, you know, it's just it's mostly seen as entertaining. I, I I see it as more than entertainment, but you know, that to the average Joe, they're like, yeah, movies are just for entertainment and, and whatnot. So already it's this kind of privileged thing that we get to go to film school to 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 pursue our dreams of becoming entertainers uh, and storytellers. And I go to school expecting that these people that are paying seventy thousand dollars, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year are going to be head, you know, head deep into this into this you know telling stories everyone's going to collaborate and and work on film sets and tell the best stories we're gonna fail together and we're gonna learn together and it was the complete opposite and like we took this class called film ANA it's called it's like film analysis class and nobody read the textbook nobody read any of the books that they suggested and people just did it for the grade. And it just shocks me that these people call filmmaking their passion. Um, I ended up finishing the textbook and reading the textbook and, and taking massive amounts of notes and annotations. And I got made fun of for reading a film textbook that, you know, people said that they were supposedly passionate about, you know, passionate about film, passionate about making movies and and, and admiring people like Martin Scorsese and I don't know it was just that I think that was a huge warning sign that maybe this $70,000 $60,000 a year isn't worth it maybe I should just you know filmmaking and filmmaking is a very entrepreneurial path so it hit me that this was going to be a very lonely ride and most of the people that I was making film supposedly supposed to make films with were not going to be in the industry and they were just going to get a film degree and work some other job so I think that's when I really decided that I was going to leave was you know when I realized that the people around me was just it was just not worth my time and making YouTube videos and meeting people like yourself was just so much, so much better, you know? So, yeah, because you can yeah, relate, that's my, right? that's my... you can relate to people like me who have also gone through the same type of things. 200%. I would have never heard this story, like, like your story from someone from, you know, at my school. At my, at my previous school, I would never heard this story of, of, of feeling like an outcast and feeling like the whole world is against you. 
and it, it's amazing it, it feels really good to hear it and i think that's why I, I i've kind of turned towards youtube and turned towards podcasts because and listening to podcasts and audiobooks because that's where you feel the most comfortable at least for me that's where i feel the most alive and and the mo- less lonely mm-hmm. you know it's a lonely path trying to do this yourself and there there are many many days where i just want to quit and i just kind of want to procrastinate and just reapply to a different school and hopefully get in but um you know as people like it's talking to people like you and 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 listening to podcasts and and watching these fellow youtubers trying to make it which you know th- that keep me going mm-hmm. another thing i like to tell um people about the whole school thing as well is when the amount of student debt that you get from university is unbelievable especially in the united states canada is not as bad as you guys but it's still like a financially crippling amount and because i only i didn't last very long so i didn't incur much student debt at all so what that did was it enabled me i had this like excess amount of money that I could spend on a gym membership, that I could spend on a meal plan, that I could spend on a camera or a laptop or a new lens or lighting. And I could spend my money into things that could directly affect my life. And that's not a textbook on sociology or, so, or some stupidness, right? It, dude, it blows my mind that people are paying $70,000 to go to a top school that is on Zoom right now, they're paying $70,000 to go to film school on Zoom. Yeah, that's crazy. Dude, with $70,000, you can make a whole feature film. You're going to learn more It like spending $70,000 on a feature film than 10 years in university. And I think that, I don't know. It's, I learned, like I, I, I spent the last month trying to build this production company, trying to reach out to potential clients, trying to just learn the business side as well as trying to learn what it means to make advertisements and, and make meaningful advertisements. And I I just I just can't tell you how much I've learned because it's so much more compared to 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 school. And you know, it's so funny now that I'm out of school, I'm reading more books and and I, I feel the need to educate myself more uh, on the things that I love and the things that I'm interested in, which is, I don't know, it's just crazy. No, that's good, man. Because well, a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that learning and education ends after school. And for some reason, there's this weird artificial date that we have in our minds that Oh, school is done. Okay, so I'm done learning. I don't need to learn. I don't need to read anymore. Now I just got to work and I can just make that money. And this like this weird thought of like, well, no, you can still keep learning. You can still keep improving yourself. Like where did this crazy idea come that education ends at the end of university? Like that just seems so, so dumb, like in my opinion. I, yeah, I saw this. I saw this YouTube video of like the common mistakes of the middle class and you know i hear my parents complain about um um you know taxes being too high and all this stuff and i'm like okay so like a study shows that the average millionaire um average business owner has around like seven sources of income i don't i don't know if this is true but like I, I think it's I think it's safe to say that that more wealthy people and, and people that do want to make a bigger impact on the world they have several sources of income right whether it's stocks real estate their job and like you know in your case you can you know have like if YouTube starts making you money podcasts starts making you money it, it's several sources of income it's a lot of work but but you know if you want to get out of this uh, the middle class that's what you're gonna have to do so. I don't know, my parents and I'm sure so many other parents out there and adults out there in the middle class are, are complaining about being stuck and, and not getting the promotion that they need and all that stuff, but they don't care to think 
outside of the box of, of what's possible of just to get out of you know um complaining essentially you know yeah man those are the people i talk to every day <laughs> those are my coworkers every day man taxes are too high covid killed the economy didn't get a raise all that kind of stuff that, that's exactly that Dude, mindset like, i hear all the time find a different source of income just it's gonna suck dude it's gonna suck you're gonna have to work harder but it's gonna be fun when you look back at it i'm sure that in in 20 years time you're gonna look back at these 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 small moments at at 600 subscribers at, at you know at a few listens and it's just gonna be like it's just gonna feel so good Mm -hmm. that you came this far and and basically what i was trying to say was like I don't think that anybody that is constantly moving, I don't think that anybody that is constantly moving, constantly learning, and constantly finding different ways to to increase their source of income, to to solve problems in the world, will ever, you know, feel like the world is against them. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, man. Well, well said, bro. Hey, we uh, we did an hour. Yeah, man. Uh, how was that for your first podcast? We did an hour. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's crazy. That's was exciting, it fun? dude. That was awesome. That was a lot of fun because I mean, I never really get to talk about this stuff. Hey, man, we uh, we gotta do it again. Let's um for let's sure plug all your uh, socials. Where can people find you on YouTube, Instagram, all that? Ryaning films for everything. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, Brining Films. You can search up my website. I don't know why you would search up my website, but yeah, Brining Films, Ryan NG Films. Yeah, definitely check it out, especially yeah. the newest video on uh, NYU. It was absolutely amazing, and we got to talk about that one on the next pod, bro. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. All right, man. So, uh, Ryan, thanks for Dude. doing the pod, man. Appreciate it. Of course, of course. All right. Till next time. All right, guys. All right. Thanks. Peace. Yes, sir. My brother is awesome.